over the years we've heard a whole lot of discourse when it comes to Lamar Jackson obviously because he's a starting quarterback in the NFL he garners so much attention with literally everything that he does and his name is a hot commodity across the league so for me when I hear people speak about him I hear analysts and I respect what a lot of them say sometimes they can get a little out of whack so I'm like I don't know about all that part but for me it hits different when players speak on Lamar Jackson, especially players who were extremely successful on the NFL level. That's why when I heard Luke Keekley on the K. Adams show a couple of days ago, when I heard him speak about Lamar Jackson, I listened. Second time in his career, he's known for 300 yard plus yards in back to back weeks. He's already going to nice. the season. Luke. Is already Lamar even better this year? Well, I think he, you know, you, I, I think so. I think he's in, he's into the, yeah, he's into, I can the too. He's into the prime of his career. And mm -hmm. they, they've obviously brought Derrick Henry in. I think Munkin's done a great job. But now look at who he's got on the offensive side of the ball. I think, you know, Mark Andrews has been really good. But now Isaiah right, Lightley, right. Zay Flowers, mm -hmm. in that 12 personnel mm -hmm. set they have, they can run all their runs. Real quick, before we continue, and shout out to Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers. Oh, by the way, get your heart of the city, Zay Flowers hoodie, joystick, shout out to him. But something that Luke Kuechly said that really stuck out to me, he said with Lamar Jackson, it, she, Kay Adams brought up that he already won two MVPs, but it seems like he's getting even better. And Luke Kuechly said that it seems like Lamar Jackson is entering the prime of his career he didn't even say that he's there yet he said he's entering the prime of his career now somebody could think like man Lamar Jackson already won two MVPs oh that was prime Lamar Jackson those MVP but no they in my opinion they weren't and I'll continue to stand on that I continue to say like look Lamar Jackson those were not those were amazing Great seasons, amazing seasons. We obviously wish they would have finished a bit differently. But those regular seasons were great from Lamar Jackson. But I still do not feel like that was his best football. I feel like it could still be better. And this is not even to hold Lamar Jackson to these super, super high standards, even though I think we do. Um, but it's because with Lamar Jackson, he wasn't even provided the best that Baltimore Ravens could have provided him as far as weapons. It's an argument that I've continued to say this year, and I will continue to say it because you see the results. Lamar Jackson is an elite player, elite player, no doubt about that. But the Baltimore Ravens, and we get you cannot have elite players at every single part of the field, at every single position on your team, but Lamar Jackson being the elite player he is, just imagine if he had more elite players around him on the offensive side of the ball because again you see what Derrick Henry is doing he is an elite player and you see what he's doing for Lamar Jackson and you see what Lamar Jackson do for elite players do stuff for elite play they help elite players stay elite and do elite things let's get back to Luke Keekley stuff they can be big they can go power football mm -hmm. they can put Pat Ricard in and they're not limited as a receiver from the receiver threat with having two tight ends in Andrews and Isaiah Lakely, I think everybody in the NFL would love to have both those guys. But I mean, all Lamar has really ever done is win games. And, and let me stop you right there too. Luke Kuechly is now talking about the versatility of the Baltimore Ravens, how they can line up in that 12 person with two tight ends, two wide receivers, and they can run, but they can also, they can do so many different things from the same look. And that makes life very tough for a defense because you're thinking, all right, what are they going to do? They got this uh, 12 personnel out here. Are they throwing? Are they running? I, I, I don't know what's coming. So that's great. Let's get back to Luke Kuechly again. Score points and go to the playoffs. I mean, he's been, I think, what, five out of his seven years in the NFL. The Ravens have gone yeah, to the playoffs. Yeah, except the negotiating so, years. They're just I just think they're big, they're physical, they know mm -hmm. what they are. Lamar's a problem. Yeah. And I think no, what you're we know I think what you're saying is 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 interesting and crazy because well firstly, Tom Monken lets the game come to Lamar. Okay. It's very obvious. So what you're saying about the Eagles, we're seeing how successful it can be 
in a place like Baltimore. The other thing that's crazy is that you're saying that he's getting into the prime of his career and there he's is. MVPs already. And then there he's getting is. better, and I think you're right, and I just think that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we said, we both agreed last week, like what a dangerous squad. And what a dangerous squad is right, because you you see you, you know it already. I ain't even gotta say that this is all stuff that you know, but it can get even better, and that's what makes it so exciting. Now for this, I don't know if Ravens gonna get involved. I don't see it because it will take a lot, but just know that the possibility is out there with him saying what he said. Max Crosby, who it has come out plenty of reports recently that he is not going to be traded. Raiders ain't trying to hear nothing. They don't want to have nothing to do with no trade when it comes to Max Crosby. But the same thing was said about Devontae Adams. And look where he is now. Nowhere to be found in a Raiders facility because he's a New York Jet. Max Crosby talked about, he said that, I, you know what? I ain't even gonna paraphrase what, I'm gonna let you listen to it right now. You know, I'm not here to rebuild, I'm here to win. Oh, so, you're not? You know, I don't know whatever that means, but yeah, I'm here to win now. And wherever okay. I'm gonna be, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be here to win. So I like that. that's all that matters to me. So you heard it, you heard him say it. I'm not here to rebuild, I'm here to win. The Raiders right now, they are not here to win. They just recently benched Gardner Minshew. Why couldn't he be benched against us? They got Aiden O'Connell as their quarterback. They just traded not only their best receiver, but one of the best receivers in the entire league. They just traded him away. So Max Crosby, hey, I don't know, man. Maybe Max Crosby is like, look, somebody come get me. Would the Ravens come get him? <laughs> For two first rounds, <laughs> I don't see it evident, but he may just become available. You never know. So this Monday night, the Baltimore Ravens got a really tough matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the world will be watching. How is this game going to go? How do y'all expect it to go? Well, you know what? I can show you better than I can tell you. Well, you know, I could do a little bit of both. Here's my game preview. Two different teams from two different conferences with two different quarterbacks that came from the same draft class in 2018 that came from the same round in 2018. Both teams have the same record sitting at four and two right now. This should be a great one between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Baltimore Ravens. Hello. Hold on. Let me stop you right there because if you want to watch that preview in its entirety, you need to download the autograph app. It's free. So you ain't got to pay nothing. And you can collect rewards and use them for all type of stuff made for fans. The link to download it is down below in the description. It is a you, you'll love it. I, I told you about this before, and I'm telling you about it again just because I don't want you to miss out on it. So download autograph ASAP. You won't regret it. Now we've entered my favorite part of these videos where we get to hear from y'all. Let's get straight into it. First question came from my guy Nigel. He said, "What's good? What's good, Nigel? Uh, Marcus Williams is not." The problem, Eddie Jackson is and has been the problem. Marlo be cheating too much, and I'm glad Harbaugh finally stopped trying to give out participation awards and bench people. Oof, my goodness. He said, Malik Harrison needs to play special teams only. I wouldn't say only, but he don't need to be out there in passing downs. Uh, he said, Trent needs to be on the field. More. Trent Simpson, I agree. I do agree wholeheartedly with that. He said, Nate needs to play all defensive snaps. Yeah, he should be out there a lot because he's just... He's 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 gonna be really really like really 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 good. You can already tell. Uh, but anyway, he said oh, Darius needs to be the starter. Uh, he's way better in coverage as safety. Yeah, he yeah he he looked good out there. He looked comfortable. Yeah, he dropped the pick, uh, but at least the receiver ain't catch it. But uh, Darius Washington, yeah. Uh, Filele, uh not off the hook, but the O line is playing better. But Lamar is an eraser, so he makes up so much. That's true. Lamar does account for a lot of, like, if that wasn't Lamar behind the offensive line, ooh. Anyway, uh, it, they all playing better, though. They all playing better, for sure. Um, but, yeah, Lamar does, well, you know. Uh, he said, Monk is calling it better because we got Henry and not Gus, who breaks no tackles and was limited. Oof. See, that's tricky right there because um, I, I did see somebody a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I think it was Henry's 87-yard run against the Bills. Somebody was like, oh, if that was Gus Edwards, it might have been, like, maybe 25 yards. And I was like, oof, 
That's something to think about right there. Um, he said, lastly, the defense is struggling because the whole staff turned over. So not only is the D.C. a rookie, but all the positional coaches got defensive coordinator jobs, Titans and Dolphins. But as long as John uh, don't try to give out participation awards again, we'll win the chip because LJ and King Henry are unstoppable and you can't trade Andrews yet. Mm. That's something I don't think about very often. That's a really, really good point. Because, yeah, not only was Mike McDonald gone, but, yeah, a lot of positional coaching is coaches, too. Uh, like you mentioned with uh, Anthony Weaver, he became a DC in um, Miami. Uh, and then Denard, uh, oh, I cannot, is it Denard Wilson? Oh, I, I cannot think of his last name right now, but he became uh, the defensive coordinator with the Titans. Titans. So, yeah, he said, Harbaugh needs to stop trying to hurt Nelly and Tyler Feelings and get Tez ready because he's the final piece. I said it first. Oof. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's a that's a bold prediction right there. That's a bold, not even prediction, a bold claim. I like it though. He said, "I'm out like Voorhees from the rotation." Wow, what a way to end it. No, when we need a wide receiver. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, "Morning, engraving. God bless you all, the family and the channel. Appreciate you." He said, "I just gotta say this because it's on my heart this morning. No, when we need a wide receiver, we get a defensive player. Please make it make sense. All I gotta say is engraving. Get Lamar a guy at wide receiver, please. I'm not saying any more names. They know we need a guy opposite Zay Flowers. I pray the Ravens get Lamar that dude, that guy at wide receiver. God bless the family, the channel, and the Ravens." We'll see. Hey, trade deadline coming up. But, hey, Rashad Bateman, he been doing his thing now. He been doing his thing. But, in my opinion, you ain't got to let that stop you. Get even better. Food for thought. Next question came from my guy, Mark JG. He said, what's up, Engraven? What's up, Mark? Congrats on your success, bro. Keep your grinding and spreading your words and doing what you love. Hope you and the fam are doing well. Appreciate you, as always, my friend. He said, I'm a big advocate for it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And our offense hasn't even peaked yet. Not even close, but I can see us continuing to stack wins with a couple L's here and there. With that being said, would you want to add another weapon? Wow, good timing, right? With that last question and leading up to it. Oh, perfect timing. I love it. Yes. Um, he said, if so, who? Would it be for offense or defense? Uh, with Adams to New York, I think that opens up Garrett Wilson for a trade. Big maybe, but doubt it. Oh, no, he ain't going nowhere. All right, he said, plus, we got D-Hop or DK as options. I would still love if they got a DK Metcalf. I, I would love it. Um, the effort would need to go up a little bit, but I, I would love that. Uh, I know Corlin Sutton's been another name that's been floating around, too. I just would love a, a receiver, a, a big body receiver, big frame that can go up and get it. Because uh, I just feel like, minus our tight ends, our tight ends could go up and get it. But for to have that in a receiver, too, I think that that would help a lot. And I know, hey, like I before, he said Tez Walker. But to get, Tez Walker obviously ain't on the field. So, yeah. Uh, but to get somebody like that. That, that's what I feel like would be great for the Baltimore Ravens offense. Uh, he said, Hassan Reddick has permission to seek a trade as well, but other than that, no defenders come to mind except linebacker Isaiah Simmons for the low. I wouldn't mind a trade, but I have a feeling we are going to stick with who we have. We'll see. We'll see. Eric DeCosta, you know, you're always sniffing around for something, but we see. He said, I'm going to be honest. I'm happy with some draft picks so far, but I think Tez is officially stashed, and I would have grabbed uh, Braylon Allen, the running back from Wisconsin, over Rasheen Ali. I tried to see what the Ravens saw, but I just don't. Mm. Rasheen Ali has been tricky because we saw him in the preseason a little bit, especially in that Packers game, and it just – it, it wasn't nothing crazy, but again, it was his first, I believe that was his first game. Um, so maybe it was a little shaky. He wasn't behind the starting offensive line, so that certainly doesn't help. Um, so we'll see with him. We'll see. We'll see what he does uh, in the league whenever he does get his opportunities. I mean, I don't know when that's going to come because obviously he's behind Derrick Henry, behind um, Justice Hill. Uh, Keaton Mitchell's still on the way too, so when Keaton Mitchell is back, he's going to be behind. So who knows if he's ever going to get any carries. Um, continuing, he said, lastly, I want your opinion. No, why don't we trade Tylen Wallace? He's not going to contribute like that, all, although he's so capable of doing so. He's the offensive Geno Stone. Big play preseason, but quiet during the regular season. I mean, Geno Stone wasn't quiet last year. He was loud. But then when Marcus Williams came back, they put him at strong safety, and then he got pretty quiet. Tylen Wallace, um, if they trade him, they only get a fifth, sixth round pick. They wouldn't get nothing crazy for him. So you might as well keep him. Um, that's what that's what I feel. Like uh, unless he's gonna be like in a trade package, you you're gonna upgrade somewhat, but he you're not gonna get much for Tylen Wallace because he hasn't been yet he hasn't been able to show his true value uh as an offensive player on a team. So if Ravens were to trade him, they wouldn't really get much. He said the only way he sees the field is if it's injury and that's the ca and if that's the case, just elevate Dayton Wade. Experience matters, but they just won't use him. Just wanted to put some things out there. Yeah, I mean and, and but then you gotta think too. He 
he's behind like all those receivers. He's behind Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar. Um, and then, like, as far as pass catchers as a whole, it's still Isaiah Lightly, Charlie Cole, Mark Andrews. Then he's still his offense as a whole is still Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, Justice. So he's behind all those guys. So he's I, – I don't like to say it, but he's, he's he will never, like, reach his full potential with the Baltimore Ravens. He won't. He wouldn't reach his full potential unless he really got an opportunity like that somewhere else. Because uh, it's, just, it's just too many people in front of him right now. Because the potential's there, but with the Baltimore Ravens, he's low on a depth chart. He's too low on a depth chart to really reach it. Uh, he said, um, we got to strap up Monday night because if we don't, it'll get ugly fast with Evans and Godwin. Uh, I can see us using Derrick Henry and the tight ends feasting. Uh, we'll see, but thanks for all you're doing, Graven, and hope you and yours are great. And I'm out like Devontae to New York. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, if you think the king is rolling now, uh, just wait till the cold season starts and players got to hit him. Oh, man, I didn't even think about that. That's a really, really good point because it's starting to finally cool down a little bit. Just a tiny bit. I want to have this for y'all up north. But anyway, he said, my question is this. With the remaining schedule, what do you think our final record could be? The only teams I can see us see giving us a problem is the Texans. Oh, don't forget about the Ravens, too, because they like to give themselves problems. But hopefully not. But... um. They sitting at four and two right now. Um, I said that the ceiling, in my opinion, for this team was fifteen and two. Um, the floor I said was uh I think I said twelve and five. Um so I could see like thirteen and four. Again, same record as last year. Uh, but uh, hey, hopefully it ends up being 15 and 2, and they just really continue to be on a tear. Uh, he also said a player I know would definitely help our secondary is Mar Marcus Lattimore. I thought it was uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Anyway, he said I don't know much about his salary, but do you think our friends the Saints would trade him to us? You know what's funny? I seen a lot of Ravens fans saying oh. <laughs> they would take him uh, with the Ravens, and they and that the Ravens should trade the Saints back Marcus Williams. I said, oh man, but um. Like sec secondary, how secondary is tricky because we could look at Brandon. We I mean, excuse me, Brandon Stevens, and think about like he's so tight in coverage all the time, but he just struggles at making a play. Mm. And with that, it's like when is enough enough? Like think about like when when do you finally be like, all right, well you know what, this ain't working. It's tricky because last year he was amazing. Last year we wasn't talking about this because he was making those plays, but this year. It seemed like he regressed a little bit. So I, I don't know, like so with Marshawn uh, Latterway, like he's obviously better than, and more established than Brandon Stevens. But I just, it's oh, that's, it, it, it's tough, man. It's it's very tough, cause yeah, it's just tough. But I, I I really still I still do believe that the biggest issue is is the scheme, not the players. The players do have their issues. But I think the biggest thing is the scheme. He also said, have you ever done a behind-the-scenes video? I think it'll be cool for us subscribers to see an inside look on how you prep and set up your questions from emails and everything else you do to create your content. Oh, that's something different right there. Hmm. I did a, something real quick with that, but nothing too crazy. But that, that will be something I should consider. I appreciate that, Jovo. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, PSA, please do not read while operating heavy equipment and not responsible for drowsiness. This may cause after reading these questions, LOL. You know, when you first sent me this email, I thought it was spam. I thought it was spam. I was getting ready to report spam, but then I read so I said, oh, okay, it's real. Anyway, he said, hello, team, keep it clean. Hoping you and the family are doing well, and especially you and Graven and your family. Thank you for the cameo appearance by your daughter. That was welcome and surprising. We appreciate that. Now time to eat. All right, let's see what he's talking about. And I appreciate you. He said, 18-ounce potato. What if, after we win the Super Bowl, Chip Kelly, who used to run the Oregon Ducks, or Scott Frost, who was the offensive coordinator in Oregon with him when they were putting up 62 points, took over as head coach when Harbaugh retires as Super Bowl champion coach? I, I wouldn't see that happen. I don't think they will bring in Chip Kelly. I, I think if, if Harbaugh retired and they wanted another head coach, I don't think they would bring, I think they'd bring in Chip Kelly. Um, I think first they will look from within because uh, Harbaugh retiring like that. When when that happens, that's going to be a big deal, like a huge deal. Um, and they they like they really going to take their time looking for whoever will replace him because that's that's a big deal right there. Because uh, he's been with the Ravens since 2008 and it. They went through a lot when it came to even hiring him, even though he wasn't the first choice. It obviously worked out. They got a Super Bowl. But, um, yeah, that, like, from 2008 to 2000, whenever he's going to retire, whenever that is. But we'll see. Um, he said, now, 22-ounce steak. 
Who else besides me would love to be the fly on the wall to listen to the 2012 Baltimore Ravens defense defend this year's Ravens after the first six games? What you mean? Oh, as far as like actually playing against them, like the the 2012 uh, Ravens defense versus this 2024 Ravens offense. Oh, that Ravens offense, they mm, nah. I, I, Ravens, this Ravens offense, I think will get them. They did have Ray Lewis, and they had they had Eric Reed too. Ooh, so mm, mm, they had Terrell Suggs, they had Lodi Nada. Oh, they had Paul Kruger too. Shout out to Kruger. They had Danell Ellaby, um, Kerry Williams, Jimmy Smith was there too. Uh, hey, it may not be uh, the, the sweep like I was initially going to say. That that could be a tough one because they, they had some guys that I like that. Uh, he said, and like my elementary school used to do when I was little, and they put on the soft music. Nap time, LOL. He is out. How we go five and two. Next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, What's up, you Raven team? Keep it clean. Hope you and your families are doing well and everyone is mentally and physically well. What a game Sunday and a great win. Offense is looking so great. And, and can I say how satisfying it is to watch Lamar with the keys to the offense, walking up to the offensive line and changing the play that he wants and that is needed for that play? Greg Roman had people thinking Lamar could not do that and wasn't good against the Blitz. Mm, that's so real right there He said Bateman is here I've been a believer in him Even when he was injured And is finally being shown But he needs to keep Building on it And getting better every week Defense did do better Than last game But still a couple Of small concerns Like communication In the back It looks like the safeties And some corners Are lost a lot Yes Great point 21 has to get his head around After the game When I'm calm And I look back on it He's there on the receiver Just can't get his head around Yeah That's the thing With Brandon Steep That's it That's all it is But that is such a big issue he said, but what I don't understand is why we don't have Marlon trailing their best receivers. Ravens just, they don't do that. They don't have corners follow. I don't know why. I, that's a really good question because I feel like if you had a corner follow, then they can't, like, try to exploit you because maybe they see a corner, like, that's not as good as another corner. They might be like, oh, hey, put our best receiver on that corner because Ravens don't be following. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, he said, uh, I, I know they like him in the slot, but if 21 can't get his head around, just put Marlon on him. Zach Orr had a good game plan. The only thing I don't get is why he's blitzing all those people on third and fourth and long. <laughs> yeah, got to get situationally better with that stuff. Um, he said, I, I feel like he's blitzing Kyle Hamilton a lot, and that leaves Roquan all alone in the middle of the field where he has been struggling. I think we need to blitz Hamilton less, and if you want to blitz, have Roe do it a little bit more. Ooh, I don't know. I've seen Roquan Smith blitz this year. It ain't really been too pretty like he did almost get one on Jaden Daniels I think it was but Roquan was like it's a reason why Kyle Hamilton plays more than Roquan because how Kyle Hamilton can get there uh he could jump in the passing lane because he's so tall he's like 6'4 but yeah anyway continue he said now the Buccaneers are a really good team and recently I think if an NFC team has a chance to beat Lamar it's them or the Eagles but I have us winning this game. Uh, the Buccaneers offense is Mike Evans centered. I think if we can slow him down and watch 14 uh, and tackle their running backs, we can win. But that's easier said than done because Mike Evans is a Hall of Famer. Uh, I think this game we might not get much of Wiggins because I think they want Marlon on Mike. The Buccaneers defense is playing good this year. They can stop the run a little bit more than other teams we played recently. But this is a historic backfield and running game, so we'll see. I think our tight ends are going to have to turn up this week because the Buccaneers cornerbacks can hang with Zay and Bate a little. My question to you is, what do you think the defense needs to work on? All communication. Communication. Um, tackling could be a bit better, but communication is the biggest issue. Just every, and, and doing their job. Not trying to do somebody else's job. Just being where you're supposed to be and doing your thing. Uh, he said, how do you think we can beat the Buccaneers? Um, as far as beating the Bucs, yeah, I... I've been saying it. Look, put put Marlon Humphrey on Mike Evans. Put Marlon Humphrey on Mike Evans because he get to be physical. Mike Evans is he ain't no burner, but I mean he got decent enough speed. But I mean he's a ball that wide receiver anyway. Um, but I would put Marlon Humphrey on him like the whole game really. But we'll see if the Ravens will do that. Uh, he said, with that being said, hopefully we'll be 5-2. and two. Thank you for reading this long message, LOL. Much love and appreciation. Thank you. Until next week. All right, we'll see you then, Josh. Next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, what's good, bro? Uh, it's your boy. Y'all know what time it is. Hope all is well with you and yours per usual. Oh, yeah, for sure. He said, I've been MIA for a second. I don't know if you remember from years ago. My mom's side is from the Philippines. Uh, dad's side is from Haiti. Ironic. That's why I've been gone. I went to see my cousins in the Philippines to get a reset. It's beautiful. Uh, no phone, no internet. They live off the land, and man, I had a ball. That's great. I, I I love that, and that's a true reset because we so used to just having our phones all the time, looking at our phones all the time, um, and then even when we get a break from our phones, we run right back to our phones all the time. So for you to get a true, that's a true reset. Like no phone, no internet. Oh yeah, that's 
That's lovely. Anyway, he said, flew back to the States to spend time with my aunt for her B-Day in Florida the day before the hurricane hit. She's older, couldn't evacuate, so I hugged it out with her. Um, she lives very close to the stadium that got the roof ripped off, the, ripped, ripped off. Her basement flooded. But other than that, we were good. Hey, that's good. I'm glad I'm glad that y'all are good, man. I know when that stadium got ripped, I said, whoa, okay now. And I know a lot of people had a lot of damage, but I'm, I'm glad y'all are good, man. He said, happy to be, be, be back in Maryland, though. Uh, I got to sell uh, my Battle of the Beltway ticket. Oh, I got to sell my Battle of the Beltway tickets. Let's just say I'll do it 10 times over. Oh, yo, you must have made a little money over there. Well, he said, but here we go. Uh, came back, found out we were winning. Uh, went to go catch the replays of the games. Bro, that Bengals game where Hobbs called a timeout where we didn't have – uh, have to is what will keep us out of the Super Bowl. Doing the regular season, if you do it in the regular season, you'll do it in the Super Bowl. That made me turn off the replay. I came back and finished it, but Hobbs' leash is too long, man. I mean, yeah, you know, he ain't going nowhere. He, he going out on his own terms whenever that ends up happening. He said, My uncle asked me this, so I'm gonna ask you, is this the final form of Lamar? No, no, tell your uncle too, no. Uh, he said the Lamar we will see for the almost for the, at least the next 10 years. He's pointing something out. Lamar Jackson's accuracy on all his passes, his poise, his feel in the pocket, decision making, and all those have been elite, the best we've ever seen. I told him no, but what do you think? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He said, team, keep it clean. Don't yell at me, LOL. Hear me out. Looking at the games, Roe has been having a bad season to his standards. Oh, I don't think anybody can yell at you for that. I think they're going to agree. Agree for sure. Uh, Roquan Smith has not been looking good. We've been saying it on here. A lot of other people, but it, he has not been looking good in my opinion. So I agree with you. He said, one thing I thought about is no matter how we felt about PQ, those blitzes, he was man in the middle. Uh, that's a big difference. I noticed well on passing downs, even went back to old tape. You know, McDonald loved that cover too. Oh, yeah, you used to always talk about it every question. He said, but we can't all agree. Simpson is better than PQ in all phases. I can't say that yet. It's, it's so early. It's, he's played in uh, seven games. I can't say he's better than PQ after seven games. I ain't trying to Ryan Clark this thing. I I can't say that. He ain't, he been nice, but I can't say he's better than PQ. He said, um, we can all agree Simpson is better than PQ in all phases. Why do you think uh Orr doesn't have him in the mid zone during blitzes or cover twos? Uh whether Roe is hurt, he said, I don't know if Roe is hurt or put on pounds or what, but it's not working right there. Not saying to take him out, but just like last year with PQ, uh have Roe take the flats and Simpson take the middle. What do you think? Ooh. <laughs> Like, I if Roquan is covering the flat, like, well, he could, he could get a good angle on somebody. So, okay, I, I guess I, I, I could roll with that one then. Uh, he said, as a family, uh, are we ready to have to talk about Marcus uh, Williams? Uh, he's another one with a very long leash. I understand we pay him a lot of money. At, at what point do we pull the trigger? We don't have to trade him, but give others a chance, not just for a few plays or situations, like totally. Washington has been balling. What do you think? Oh, you ready to he ready to bench Marcus Williams. He said he's tired. Um, Ardarius Washington, I, I think they could, they will play Ardarius Washington a little more in the other safety spot where Eddie Jackson is. I don't think they're gonna bench Marcus Williams. I don't think Ravens got that in them. I don't. Well, anyway, he said last but certainly not least, I said this uh, last year, bro. We got a lot of players, a lot this year. Uh, Bateman is rolling. Notice I said Bate is rolling because that's the X factor to this offense. Zay rolling. Nelly making his one catch meaningful. Even Wallace is out there. Running backs rolling. Lamar on point this year. This the year, bro, and this is the year we have to make a few tough decisions. I'll leave it at that. And like 31 other NFL teams will be when the news breaks that Max or DK or MB more. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm out. Hey, if that ends up happening, you, oh, I'm going to be celebrating, especially DK Metcalf. I mean, Max Rodby too, because Max Rodby, like we talked about earlier, I mean, y'all already know. So I, I will be celebrating too. He also said, sorry, bro, I know I just sent in uh, one, but I thought of something. I know we got a lot of DBs, but. I think we can get the best cornerback in the NFL. I know we always talk about being realistic, but I really, really think we can pull this off. Hear me out. Bro, time time after time, year after year, he has been on the islands with the best of the best and stood his ground, very sticky in coverage, never gets burnt, never any separation. You talking about Brandon Stevens? No, but anyway, he said the best thing a team can do against him is throw a perfectly placed ball to a great wide receiver to make a great catch. You talking about Brandon Stevens? He said if – okay, he is. Okay, I, I – I, I, was, well, I mean, it sounded like you were talking about Brandon Stevens, but I was just joking a little bit, too. I thought you were talking about it. But anyway, he said, if Brandon Stevens can just turn his head around, like if he can just locate the ball, we would hands down have the best cornerback in football. How do you feel about Brandon's play? Not too bad for a running back. That's true because he was a running back. I like that, what you did that with that. But, yeah, it's true. Brandon, if, if he just turns his head around, make a play on the he would be – yeah, he would be the best, actually, because he's always right there. 
That's such a good point. Next question came from a team keep it clean patron, my guy Martin. He said, I got a couple of things I want to say. First thing is that first, uh, Coach Mangini made an argument that Josh Allen is better than Lamar because he has less to work with. I am not hearing that for years. Lamar had the most underwhelming weapons and our top running back was Gus Edwards. Don't get me wrong. I really like Gus Edwards, but my point being that Lamar had much less than everyone else and still won two MVPs. We all, that's true. You're right. Spot on. He said, we are all happy that Bateman has arrived and that Zay has been great for us. I'm going to use that same lazy excuse uh, everyone else uses when talking about it's not the player's fault. Their team surrounded the quarterback with talent. Uh, now I'm using y'all excuse. It's not Lamar's fault that Derrick Henry was a free agent and anyone could have signed him but chose not to. It's not Lamar's fault the Ravens drafted Zay Flowers. I won't let them use the excuse of, oh, well, QBX has less to work with. Uh, ex ex I won't let them use that excuse. No, no, no. Something else I'm not hearing. It's Nelson Aguilar slander. I was arguing with a guy in the comments uh, section on Nitro's show. He said, Nelson Aguilar is trash and we needed to get rid of him. When I confronted him about it, he wouldn't give a reason. He just said he was trash. Look, I know everyone is upset that we didn't get Devontae Adams, but that doesn't mean you got to take it out on Nelson Aguilar. That's true. That's true. And Nelson Aguilar is not trash. He's not trash at all. I said he has been making the most of the few passes he does get. Don't blame him because you didn't get the guy you wanted. Aguilar is a role player. We ought to understand that, or I hope we would understand that. I imagine 12 years ago, people were saying the same thing about Jacoby Jones. Oh, he sucks. We need someone else. He doesn't contribute. Imagine if we had this player instead of Jacoby, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't on social media back then, and I had to watch the games on TV because we couldn't afford internet. But knowing Ravens fans, I imagine the exact same things. Nelson Aguilar, uh, they say about Nelson Aguilar, was said about Jacoby Jones, too. Uh, if you're going to hate on, I, 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 would, I don't think so because with Jacoby Jones, while he contributed a little bit at wide receiver, punt return, kick return, that was his thing. And that made a huge difference, obviously. Uh, he said, if you're going to hate on one of the players, at least have a reason to do so instead of just saying he's trash and that's it. If Nelson was costing us games like Mike Williams with the Jets, I might agree, but he is not an issue. It can only do so much with the few opportunities he is given. That was well said. Very, very well said, well explained, especially about Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, he ain't out there getting uh, 10 targets. He ain't out there getting five targets a game. Nelson Aguilar usually gets like one, maybe two targets a game. But like you said, he makes the most of it. 